Massacre at Central High is a 1976 horror thriller directed and written by Rene Daldir and starring Daryl Murray, Robert Carradine, and Kimberly Beck as a high school transfer student pushed to the edge by a trio of brutal bullies resorts to murder to reclaim the school from oppression. Synapse Films presents this film on Blu-ray with a 2K scan. What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken and today guys I wanted to talk about Massacre at Central High. This is a Synapse Films release, a Blu-ray release uh, that has been previously released before but this is a new uh, release from them. I think it, it has come out in Steelbook before and now it's coming out on standalone Blu-ray. But yeah, we're going to talk about this one. This was a first time watch for me, but before we get into it, I need to ask that if you're not yet a subscriber to the Mid-Level Media channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. We talk Blu-rays, 4Ks, physical media, owning the movies that you love every single day on this channel. You'll definitely enjoy it, so I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video and comment down below what your thoughts on Massacre at Central High from 1976. Have you ever seen this movie before? Because I had not. Have you seen it? Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below and then turn on the bell notifications for all future videos. So let's jump right into it. We're going to talk about the movie, then we're going to talk about the transfer and all the special features and specs and all that good stuff. But right off the top, I, I, I really did enjoy this movie. I really did. Like I said, this is my first time watching this film. I heard some, I, I feel like really great things going into it. I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, when it first started, it starts with this like weird, almost melancholy song. It kind of reminded me of like the Mamas and the Papas. It, 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 the movie is set in the 70s, so I don't know. This is a weird movie because it is set in the 70s. It was made in the 70s. It feels 70s to an extent, but it also feels kind of 80s. Also, I could feel like I feel like this movie could also been made. Um, in the 80s. So I did really enjoy this one. I didn't love it. It had a really odd sensibility to it. I don't know. It was just very strange, but it's really just a revenge story at its core. It kind of reminded me of the movie The Wraith. I watched that last year. The Wraith. Did I say that right? The Wraith. I watched that last year for the first time. That was a Vestron video release. had Charlie Sheen in it. It really kind of reminded me of that, just the way that they set everything up and got the pieces into play and how there was this kind of like mystery guy coming back to take revenge and kill people. Uh, only in this movie, you have an idea of who that is and you get to know him as a character. Where in The Wraith, you didn't really get to know him as a character. You just kind of saw him come in after and just take everybody out. So similar premises and setups. I wonder if The Wraith took inspiration from this movie at all because they really felt similar in story structure. Let me know if you feel that way in the comments uh, section below or if I'm just way off base in that comparison. Um, but it really, the, the movie is different because it's high school and it really deals with like popularity and different groups and factions within high school. Like just the social hierarchy of being in high school without like the parental like there's no real you don't really see a lot of teachers like patrolling the hallways or anything like that it's almost feels like the school is ran by the students there's like no uh parents there's no teachers there no there's no adults in this movie until you get like to the very end there's like a dance and then you finally see some adults so it really focuses on the kids in the school and it almost feels like they're there at school but they're running the school so it's like if you're running the school, why the hell are you even there? There's no parents around, no teachers around. Just go do whatever you want. But they're all in school. So you know that the teachers and, and the adults are around somewhere, but they're just not patrolling. So it kind of feels off in that respect because you all, usually in high school movies, you always have the teacher that's patrolling. Say, hey, get back into your class. Do this, do that. But in this one, you don't have that. It's just the kids kind of feel like, uh, it kind of feels like the inmates are running the asylum, asylum to an extent. But so, you know, it deals with all that, but it really just takes it to the next level. Um, and yeah, it deals with social structure. So you have this one group of guys who's basically like running the whole school and they're like mean, they're like big bullies uh, to everybody. And things finally get to a boiling point and they end up hurting one of the guys that one of the new kids that comes in and he comes back to take his revenge. And again, they don't kill him. Like in the movie, The Wraith, like they kill him and then he comes back as like spirit. It's not like that. It really doesn't feel like with what they did to him that it, they really warrants 
uh, what he does to them back. The revenge that he takes doesn't really warrant what was done to him in the first place. So that feels kind of weird. It's like, okay, you, you know, you, you hurt my leg, so I'm going to come back and kill all of you. Like, that doesn't feel like it equates really. Like if they would have killed his, his mom or his girlfriend or something like that, something more extreme, that would have felt like it, uh, you know, was more deserved. So when you start to get into the killings, it's almost like that person becomes, he goes from being the hero to the anti-hero, to almost the villain of the entire movie. So it's a weird sh character shift um, that the guy takes. And I think that that guy is played by Daryl Mari. Uh, and he does a great job as the character. Like I, I feel I buy into all of the twists and turns of his character and his mood. So he does a really great job selling it. Um, it's a very violent movie. There's a lot of cool set pieces. There's explosions. There's a lot of brutal scenes. So it definitely delivers in that respect. I went into this thinking it was like a slasher movie. It's really not. Don't go in. But again, there are killings and there are things that happen. But it's more of like a, a high octane revenge thriller type movie. Um, you know, it's it doesn't have that slasher horror sensibility. I, w I, I even struggle to even call this movie a horror film. Again, it's more like a straight revenge thriller with almost action uh, thriller to an extent. So I do struggle to call it horror. I was never scared or never really felt any mood or, or you know, tension or suspense throughout the film. It just felt like a straight on action film that was pretty straightforward. There is a little bit of a mystery aspect there, but again, you kind of know what's going on, but the way that the film's setting everything up, it's almost like, well, is that what's going on? But then you get to the end and it turns out it is. So anyway, um, the dialogue is, whoever wrote this film, the dialogue was very odd. It was very odd. There is a scene uh, where somebody's like struggling to get his math homework done. And this one kid walks up and goes, uh, here, let me help you. I'm actually very good at math. And then he sits down and says, see, that's how you do this. It's just a very, uh, very awkward dialogue that doesn't feel like. And I think that this, this is a foreign filmmaker. I think this is a French filmmaker, uh, Rene Daldier, that made this. So I, I wonder if that had something to do with it just that different sensibility and style to it. So very odd dialogue in the movie, but it, for this type of movie, I don't know, it kind of felt like it worked and, and added to the charm of the film itself. There's plenty of nudity in this movie. If you like sex and you know nudity and, and boobs and butts, you're gonna get a lot of, they're just girls just walking around in the nude all the time. There's a scene where the girls just, they're outside, there's like, a, they're set up camp. Uh, they were trying to like get away from what was going on in town and stuff and just kind of hide out and they're at camp and she's just walking around in the nude. There's another scene where a girl just walks out, she got her top ripped off and she's just walking out of the school plain as day, bare chested and like not even trying to cover up um so there's a lot of that in this movie you got uh, kimberly beck in this film who was in friday the 13th part four i didn't recognize her until i read that on the back but she's the main girl in this movie and she shows it all numerous times throughout the film you got robert carradine in this film who was in revenge of the nerd so it was cool to see him this would have been God, eight years before Revenge of the Nerds. So he was playing a high school student eight years before he was playing a college student, I think freshman and college student. So I don't know how old he was in Revenge of the Nerds. He must've been close to 30. Uh, Cause he still looks, you know, he doesn't look super young in this movie. He still looks like a teenager, like a 17, 18 year old, but he's an interesting character. He kind of goes from being that classic nerd to being the bully. Cause what happens is when all these like uh, all the other bullies get taken out by this guy. It's like new bullies step in. So then the guy feels like he has to take them out too. It, it's an odd story. Again, it's, you'll never see anything else like this movie. It's very original um, in that respect. So, but yeah, it's, it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. I had a good time with it. I can't say I, I loved it, uh, but it's a fun movie. I can see watching this one again and maybe it grows on you. Just, it has a charm to it if you don't take it too seriously. But yeah, the music in the opening was very odd because it had the same music in the opening as the title screen. So when I started it, and it had all the same scenes. When I started it, I thought I was still on the title screen, so that was kind of odd. But yeah, it's a good movie. I I would give it um, I give it a three out of a five. Again, it's not what I would say is a great movie, but it's a fun movie that feels kind of '80s, but has that '70s aesthetic as well. But let's get into the transfer. So this is a uh, from the original 2016 restoration that was supervised by the director himself, Rene Daldier. 
So this is already from a previous transfer done six years ago. So I think what happened was they released a steelbook. Synapse released a steelbook of this back in 2016. And then in 2020, there was another release. And I think that was like a steelbook box set release with maybe a digibook or something in there as well. It's some kind of booklet. And now they're releasing this standalone Blu-ray edition. So they released steelbooks before. Now they're doing just this straight Blu-ray case, which they kind of did the same thing, I think, with uh, Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. But... So yeah, just a bare bones release. You got the you got the Blu-ray in here and all that stuff. But as far as the transfer, like this transfer looked great and Synapse does an excellent job with all of their transfers. Like even their Blu-ray transfers almost look 4K. And this is a 2K scan. This isn't even a 4K scan, but it looked just like a 4K scan. I've seen 4K scans that don't look as good as this 2K scan. So I don't know what they did to clean this up and just make it look so vivid and colorful, but they really did an excellent job with this one. And the same thing with Living Dead in Manchester Morgue, that looked almost 4K as well. So the transfer in this, I can't say enough good things about it. Again, this is a 70s film and they just cleaned it up to perfection. It was beautiful. This is also a region free Blu-ray. So you should be able to play that in any country on any player. Uh, from what I was reading. Getting into the audio, it's a DTS HD Master Audio 2.0, so they didn't upgrade that at all. It's the same audio that was in all the previous releases. There's some good special features on here. There's an audio interview with Mike White. There's uh, interviews with the cast members, Andrew Stevens, Robert Carradine, Daryl Mari, and Rex Steven Sykes. There's audio interviews with the director, Rene Daldier, conducted by and written by horror historian Michael Jingold. There's Hell in the Hallways, which is the making of Massacre at Central High, which I think is about 45 to 50 minutes again it says a new making of documentary but it's not new it's new to the 2016 blu-ray release that came out so it's new to that it's not new to this particular 2022 release you get theatrical trailers, still galleries, all that stuff, but a really good amount of special features here. And again, it's worth it just for that documentary alone. It was a really good documentary. I watched about 25, 30 minutes in it, and they really commented on the uh, the dialogue and how, how they knew at the time that it, there was something off about the dialogue, which I found to be funny. They're like, even the some of the lines they were talking about, I forget what it was, now it's coming to me, but a couple of the actors were talking about the dialogue and they're like, yeah, we even had to go back and like rewrite scenes because they were it was so bad that we had to rewrite it. So it's funny because they said they delivered the lines that they rewrote and nobody noticed. So that that was kind of funny that the, that they, that came up in the um, the making of. But yeah, really good release though. Again, solid release. It looks great. It's a really fun movie. Great special features. Uh, just talking about it, just basic packaging right here. You know, you have some cool artwork on the front and all that stuff on the back. And I'll kind of zoom in and show you the, show you the specs and the casting list and all that good stuff. Then we'll open it up and you see you got some artwork on the disc and then you have this synapse booklet inside. But yeah, just the Blu-ray disc, no, no uh, DVD or, or anything like that. But it's a solid release. You can get it for $22.99. I would honestly, like if you like these kind of movies, if, if what I was talking about sounds good, I think you'll really enjoy this one. I would recommend picking this one up. I will link it down below. Um, in the description, but thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on the bell notifications. Comment down below if you've seen this or if you plan on picking it up based on my recommendation. Like this video. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are down below in the description and we'll see you next time.